During this month, we've been dealing with power. Our power. So power is energy. Power is the energy we use. So as beings of light, we have this beautiful core of power, but we also need to be sourced. We need power to come to us, and we need power to go through us. So as metaphysical Christians, what power do we want to source? God. We want the energy of the universal God force, which is all around us and through all things, to move through us, to fill us, to overflowing, so that we can then express out into the world. Very simple concept. We understand that if we deny ourselves that access to God's love, who do we seek power from? Each other's. Each other. I'm tired, make me feel better. I know you've said that. I don't feel good. You're now responsible for my happiness. Why do I have to work so hard? Give me a raise. You know, we, we seek to draw power to us from everyone around us. And that is exhausting, as you well know. If you give power to people around you, do you not become depleted? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you take power from people around you, that's also efforting as well. Because we're not designed to do that. We're designed to breathe in the love of God and express it through us. And then our power center becomes a precious core of flow. But as human beings, during this series, we're talking about how we've protected our power. Don't take my power from me. I need it. And if you haven't been through all the weeks, you might want to watch them on YouTube because it's very fun. You might see someone yet that you know. All right. So we don't want to work at protecting our power. We want to begin to work at flowing power. So. When you come to metaphysics, when you came into the metaphysical thought, how many were actually born and raised in it? Two. Okay, great. You guys chose it before you came. But most people come to it either because their life is not working, or because they know there's something more, or because they've been denying who they are for so long and they know they need to find a way to express. Something some unfit, something doesn't fit, and we seek to find something that makes more sense to us. So we all typically come to metaphysics out of some sort of realization or need to be greater, to understand greater. Does that make sense? All right. You guys know my story, how I came. But it's, a, it's, it's really understanding what is the truth of, of me and how do I embody that truth. How do I know the love that I feel from God in a way that doesn't limit the perceptions? So when I came into metaphysics, and this was a, a while ago, because I was raised in a, a metaphysical household on many levels, but a metaphysical church I had not yet found. So when I found my first metaphysical church, oh low, so many years ago, I was directed to this book by John Randolph Price called Practical Spirituality. And I share this book with you because I have loaned my copy so many times over the years. I've had to buy that many copies because <laughs> they never come back. Mm -hmm. But when I first read this, it was amazing because it's, it, it is basically, you can choose your world. This is a new thought. You can take your power. You can create your reality. You can uh, create what you want to do. You can actually choose your world. And... I know that's not new for you at this point, but it was very new for me. And if it is new for you, I highly recommend this book. It's a beautiful outline of the one, two, threes of how to do it. But it opened my mind to the reality that I had power within me that was greater than my boss. That was a new thought. That was greater than the situation I was in socially. That was a new thought. Greater than my heritage. New thought. So it opened for me many, many possibilities if I own the power within me, and I have that power that I can direct to new choices, I can change my reality. Everybody breathe. Now those of you that come to metaphysics, the first time you come in, you come in, you're reading something, you're getting something, the first time you hear it, you are on fire. Have you noticed? You manifest like crazy. You just keep manifesting. It is easy. And all the old timers are looking at you going, good job, good job. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of manifests, because you're manifesting in matter, you're making your dreams happen, you're getting that thing you wanted, you're making this happen over here, and this happen over here. And then all of a sudden, things start slowing down. And you go, why is it not easy anymore? Because when you believe this, you opened up to, ooh, this is possible. And you got to have all the things you wanted. And the next level is now you're going to try to give yourself all the things that you don't want to give yourself. All the things you've told yourself no about. 
didn't even know. I told myself, no, yes, you did. So now it becomes hard. Now you have to change those beliefs within you to lift into another level of consciousness. And it becomes work. Work? Work? Yes, it's work. And if you can make it through that level, there's another level. And there's another level. Anyone who's been in metaphysics for a long time understands this, yes? Yes. yes. Babies, new to the thing, love this. They love that first year or two. Just like crazy. Everybody say, I went through that. I went through that. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. But if we're going to become super beings, we stay the walk. Because there's always more, and there's always more, and there's always more. And we stay the walk. And what shifts us from one level to the next is work. That's why you guys are here today. See, I'm not afraid of work. I'm not afraid of work. work. Okay. The more light, the more love, the more opportunities. It is not okay to occasionally use your power to hurt or harm once you lift into that level of wanting to be a super being. Did I just lose half of you? No. It is not okay to occasionally occasionally hurt or harm. If we want to rise and keep rising, that is not okay. If you want real freedom, you have to let go of attachments and judgment. True freedom, let go of attachments and judgment. If you want to move to become a creator God and create with God, you have to become love in all things. And it is a beautiful, beautiful dream, isn't it? So who doesn't want to become love and all things? Don't we all? Yes. Okay. All right. When we're on the journey, I'm going to expand you a little bit. We see movies like What the Bleep. How many of you have seen that? Okay. We read books by Deepak. We read Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. Getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> we read the Bible. Oh, that's right there with Life and Teachings. Good. Okay. As we are exposed to these thoughts, what we see is a universal message. And the universal message is you are greater than you know. What the Bleep was a movie that came out 15 years ago. It is a fantastic movie. And it shows the spiritual concepts of avatars and masters and, and all these beautiful qualities that we hear about being validated by science in the movie and through Deepak and through the Bible and through life and teachings it is said that man can bilocate and be present in two places at the same time. Have you done that? I haven't either. But science is proving it's possible. That's shocking, isn't it? Science is proving it's possible. Science <coughs> has done, and these are experiments that were done 20 years ago, where they would have a wife on one coast of the United States and the husband on the other coast of the United States, and they would have them encased in buildings where, um, I think, leaded, where vibration can't enter in. Then they would hurt the female somehow, and the husband would simultaneously, not a second later, but simultaneously feel the pain in his body across the coast coast to coast. But do you see it's simultaneous? And science goes, what's up with this? What's up with this? How is that possible? There are so many things about the human spiritual super being that science is just now discovering. Back in the 80s and the 90s when they were just beginning and Deepak and the men were out teaching and all the master spiritual leaders were teaching, they said you can take uh, vacuum and then put some cells in it or some uh, uh, atoms that are vibrating a certain way and then you can introduce a different atom that vibrates a different way, put it in that vacuum and it will become like the people that are in it. It will become like the ones that are already there. Can we say stem cell research? Now they can take the stem cells and make them into any organ they need it to be? All of these things that we heard of, you, should, you guys should watch What the Bleep. And let your minds go, oh, that's already being done. 
That was insane back then. That's being done in science today. The capacity of the human body, the capacity of the human mind, the capacity of the spirit has yet to be tapped if we move into super being. Now that may not be what you want to do. That may not be what you want to do. But isn't it cool to think that we could? Yes? yes. All right. Okay. We used to love it. I used to love going to all the classes and all of listening to all the teachers about all the fantastic things that were out there. And it was truth to me. My heart would just open and I'd be so excited because as a met metaphysical and sensitive child, you have all these experiences and you can't explain them. You don't know why you know that this is happening to someone. You don't know why that, that you've perceived this before it happens. You don't know why you're having all these experiences and seeing healings and being a part of these things that defy what we have defined matter as. But when you come into metaphysics, all those beautiful explanations start becoming visible. And you start learning and growing. And I wanted to share with you in Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East, this is uh, book three. 172. This is, for those of you that have read it, will probably remember. They tell us that the journey of awakening, we are really awakening through our own limitation. That we all, through incarnations and through experiences, have this encrusted layer of energy around us where we believed that we were limited where we believe we can't have what we want, or we believe that we have to suffer, or we believe whatever we believe. And that as we begin to break through that, it's like we have to crack through these old, um, sh the shell around us. And have you ever seen uh, a cicada? We had the opportunity to see one a couple years ago. It was on the porch, and it was starting to crack through its shell. It was so amazing. And we thought, come on, cicada, come on. Well, then we went back a little bit later. Come on, you can see the movement. It took it hours. We're taking pictures at the various stages thinking, why isn't it just coming out? The hole's big enough, come on. <laughs> we didn't get to see it come out. It took hours for it to come out. But we want instant, don't we? So we're all in these beautiful shells, like a beautiful eggshell. And we're cracking through with our divine ideas. Every time we have an idea that I can have what I want, crack. Every time we think, oh, look at Jesus walked on water, that's cool, crack. <coughs> Jesus manifested matter, that's cool, crack. And we're moving our energy up into possibilities. And then pretty soon, we get our heads out of the shell. Enough where we can see the vista. We can see that we are spirit. We're not limited. We're spirit, but we're in our shell. And then we have to go back and pick the shell some more. And this is when you do the internal work, because you're still in the shell. And they said this, you can work until you have reached yourself sufficiently to get a glimpse of the horizon. Here you can cease to struggle. You're in case still in the shell. Realize the newborn chick when his head is free, must still go on with the struggle. It must be entirely free from the old environment before it can grow into the new. It has sensed and perceived what is ahead of it, but it still has to work to get there. And I know I've talked with you guys a lot about the harmonic convergence in 1987. I know this is ancient history. Um, there was a prayer in August of 1987 worldwide, a prayer for harmony and peace. It was in August of 87. And uh, this was before the internet, before websites, before cell phones. It was word of mouth only. And millions upon millions of people across the world stopped and meditated for this planet. They monitored this as the moment when critical mass of the earth, critical mass of the consciousness of mankind on the earth, shifted to 20 to 51 percent positive because of the immense input of light that we put in the planet that day. And if you could have pulled back and looked at all the people praying and meditating 
we were all in eggshells. It was all a bunch of egg people. We hadn't broken free yet, but we could see. We could see, we could believe, we could pray, and we could have impact. And I know that in the last 20 years, or how long it's been, 30 years, <laughs> we have been making progress, all us egg people. <laughs> And you do know, and I've told you many times, the prophecies of Edgar Casey and all the people of days gone by were tricking just like this until 87, and they stopped. They stopped, and things started changing. The world started changing. We went on a new path. That is the impact of love, of the chicks just even looking at what's around them. Sound good, huh? You all, when you go into start metaphysics, the first thing that you want to do is instant manifestation, right? Mm -hmm. I want to instantly manifest. Do you know why you don't? Because if you instantly manifested, you'd manis manifest every thought <laughs> that comes through your body. So thank you, God, <laughs> that you don't know instant manifestation. <laughs> Now, once you reach the level where you're in love, and love is the greatest thing in your heart, and you are working as a co-creator with God, manifestation becomes instant because love is the greatest power. It's not something that we click off of our list of achievements, oh, I can now instantly manifest. It's something we become. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Becoming a super being simply means that I am now accessing all of the energy, love, and power that is available to me as child of God. And it, it, it rises above all the human struggles. We're not even in the human struggles any longer. We're seeing ourselves as child of God and then what is good and right for me. So easy, yes? Yes. All right. And Jesus, teacher, healer, how to bring all my heavy duty work here today. The novice lacks ease and peace of mind. How do you think the adepts, the initiates, retain the physical body long after the recognized human lifespan? How do they retain their youthful appearance? How can they use power that demonstrates their complete control over physical atoms? Many, many incarnations and practice of divine laws through this they've achieved mastery. They are able to control matter on a physical and higher level. They understand spiritual science, and they work in harmony with divine law, and they are able to perform what is called a miracle. Now, if you're in this room, I would bet that each one of you has seen matter move in a miraculous way. That you've seen things happen that really, by law, shouldn't happen. That you've seen healings occur that were miracles. You've seen God move in ways that was unlimited. This is our goal as a way of life, is it not? Yes. To become that life essence that walks in love, that walks in, in love always. When we are in not love, do you ever wonder how you, you slip out? <laughs> when you move into your own will, that things have to be a certain way, have to not know it. This is my desire, and it shall be. Do you see the difference? It shall be that way, because I declare it so. It has to be that way. Two different frequencies. When we are in our will, when we are feeling guilt. I am guilty because something has happened that I feel responsible for, that I'm not happy with the outcome of, therefore I need to go back and do it again, I need to make amends, I'm going to carry the guilt even after I make amends because I shouldn't have done it. Do you hear me? Okay. When we take on responsibilities for others that are not our own, do you realize you're out of love then? If you're not happy, I haven't done my job. When we take on the energy of others, we step out of love. I have been 
walking and many times driven dun, 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 because I'm on a mission from God. I'm on a mission from God. I'm going to plow through everything. I'm going to get things going. Yeah, 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 mission from God. And only recently am I really understanding after, oh, lo, how many years, we aren't counting, of truly trying to walk in love. Only recently am I understanding I am the mission of God. Not you guys. Not you guys. I'm the mission of God. Me and God. If me and God are good, I'm great. If me and God are in love and I'm loving, I'm good. To not measure accomplishment or achievement outside of self but to stay God in me. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Holding the light. Now I'm going to read you something that may disturb you. But I shall read it anyway. Ready? Because I know that you know somebody like this. This is long. This is Life and Teachings of Masters of Far East, Book 3, page 171. In first taking up this work and perceiving the truth or foundational scientific facts, you take the first step with exhilaration and enlightenment. It's so far beyond anything you've known so far. And then doubts and fears creep in. You are discouraged. And your going seems to be struggle, which we talked about, right? You struggle one way, then the other, and then you seem to be losing ground. The struggle is too great for human beings to accomplish, and you begin to look at all the failures of all the people around you. And you say, God's children are dying on every hand. Nobody's accomplishing all these things. Nobody's becoming a super being. What is this all about anyway? The idea of everlasting life, peace, harmony, perfection. I idealize this, but I don't see it. And you say that, well, this must then come after I die. <coughs> I must know this after I die. So you let go and find rest for a time. And you realize it's much easier to drift on and on with the human tide on the downward trend. Again, the race consciousness has had another setback. Another who had a great spiritual enlightenment and understanding and could have succeeded has failed and the race consciousness has another binding hold on humanity. Sad. Breathe it in. That is not me. That is not me. That is not you. You're sitting in these chairs. Your spirit knew what I was going to talk about today. You absolutely knew what I was going to talk about today. That's not you. Everyone who is hearing this has the courage to see themselves as greater. Everyone who's hearing this has the courage to follow the God in their own heart. You don't have to become someone who walks on water. Maybe that's not yours to do. But you can become someone who walks in love. And if you walk in love, everything is possible to you. Um, we were on our walk the other day, and uh, Patrick reminded me of one of his famous stories. So I shall share this with you. <laughs> we love Patrick's famous stories. So this is about a man who lives in Alaska and who has the dogs that pull his sled and a novice from the States was up chatting with him, looking at his dogs and stuff. And the novice said to the Alaskan native, how do you pick your lead dog? Do you look for a big one? Is it the strongest one? Is it the, the fastest one? How do you pick your lead dog? And the Alaskan man said, it's the one who listens to me and does what I say. That's my lead dog. We don't have to come to life, God, or anyone else with our inventory. We don't have to be qualified or not qualified in our mind. We just have to listen to our God within 
and then do what we're asked. We're not puppets. We're not puppets. That beautiful spirit of God within is you. It is you. And as you listen to it and express it, you are being you. You are being your super being. You're being the light you are. You know? Does this make sense to you guys? But how often do we get the guidance to do something? We go, oh, I'm going to do this. And then we take inventory with people around us. What do you think, David? Should I do it? Juanita, should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do this? And then we inventory. 50% said yes. 40% said no. Now what happened to my guidance? Now anything I take out into the world isn't me expressing. It's me responding to opinions of others. Do you see the difference? How many of you put your guidance out for opinion before you act upon it? Being a super being, you may not, our world may not realize it this lifetime, but we're kind of realizing it in science now, aren't we? Isn't science saying you guys are pretty super, pretty powerful, pretty amazing? So if we understand that which we thought was not possible 20 years ago is possible today in science, maybe we can take that same mindset to spirit, that which you may not have thought was possible in spirit is possible today. Science is finally catching up with the masters. And you have to master one thing. You. Your life. What you do. You're not here to save the world. You're here to love the world. And even in our little eggshells, we have impact. Even when we're in our eggshells, we have impact. How do you guys feel? Right. Well, let's just embody this for a second. Master beings of light. Only a master can come to the planet and pretend they are not one. Put your feet on the floor. Shut your eyes. See a beautiful column of light coming over you. Just feel the energy of God's love in that column of light. Feel your heart. And your whole body vibration, just notice it. It may be slightly different than your heart. But I want you to go to your heart for a minute and feel the pristine energy there. Take a breath and let that heart light move through the body. And say these words if you will. I am an eternal child of God. And see how that feels going through your body. You should feel the energy beginning to just sweep away debris and dross that's no longer needed. Open the heart again and ask to feel the love of God filling you. God and I are one. God's love flows through me now. Feel that beautiful love pouring through the body, mind, and spirit. And now we're going to ask one simple question. What is my next step? And just listen. And when you feel or sense guidance, just let it move through your body. If you do not hear or feel anything in this moment, you will because you asked. It will come to you as you walk. What is my next step? Father, Mother, God, I ask that your light continue to flood through every column, every soul, every light here. I ask that they begin to feel that beautiful, unlimited nature within. 
and that the Christ I am, the Christ within each, begin to vibrate in love. And I thank you. Take a breath. Send your love into the room. Feel the chair beneath you and let your focus come to your body. Before you open your eyes, I want you to honor the beautiful vehicle that you are expressing through. And today I call forth health, youth, wholeness, and love. And we thank you, God, and so it is. All right, you can gently open your eyes. How do you feel? Divine super beings of light, you are capable of whatever you choose. And I support you all in going forth in joy and gentle movement. You don't have to crack that shell all at one time. Gentle movement. Just keep your head up to see the potential. Say yay, God. Yay, God.